tell people marriage is like a marathon, right? And I tell people if you train for marriage like it's a sprint, you'll burn out in the first mile. Most people treat marriage based upon the concepts of the wedding. So what happens is they get so caught up in the ambiance of infatuation that they miss on the opportunity to train. Nobody who doesn't train for a marathon finishes a marathon. That's why most people don't finish marriage. Because most people train for marriage based upon the world's rules. So the meaning of marriage is true commitment. And marriage, let's ask what this is compared to. It's likened to Christ and the church. That's why the Bible says that women submit yourself to your husband and husbands should love their wife as Christ loved the church. That's the parallel. Why does God give those kind of parallels? Because he's saying if women, okay, let me make sure I phrase this right. When it comes to submission, women have to make sure that their man has been sent by God. Because women are made nurturers. That's why I tell men, women do not want a man who's parked. They want a man that's progressing because women naturally nurture. When you know that about yourself, it will help you to be sensitive to God to make sure you're not being beside someone. I posted a post of the day that says, marry progression, not potential. Most people are selling with a man or with a woman based upon his or her potential. If that person's not progressing towards that potential, if there's no Christ in his life, if he's not or she's not trying to develop himself in the things of God, then why, do, why, would a, why should a woman submit to that man? Secondly, why should a man sacrifice for a woman who's not willing to nurture him? A lot of men are with women who want their wallets open, they want the money, they want the access, they want the business, they want the ambiance of what it means to be with that kind of man. A lot of good men have been sacrificing to Jezebel's, sacrifice of a woman to get control over the man. The Bible talks about even in Eden times, the woman is always fighting for the attention of her husband and a man is gonna be sometimes overly consumed with his work that he'll forget about his family. That's the curse of us. When we go all the way back to Eden, we'll better understand our sin nature when it comes to love. Man's sin nature is, how many of us been like that? It's all about the football game. It's all about my job. I'm at work until 10 o'clock at night. So what happens is we have been dedicated to the soil instead of being suppliers of the family. Women have been like, you know what, I'm going to fight for your attention. That's why I tell women and men, we got to better understand where we was made from. Man was made from the ground. Woman was made from the man. When women realize that man was not made from her, because women can be up under man all day. I'm not saying that y'all do. But what I'm saying is, a woman can be up under her man all day. We can, I'll be like, dang girl, get up, you know, get away, you know what I'm saying, because I'm trying to go do. But when she realizes, and when women realize, let that man go out there and hunt. He was made from that. When you understand how we was genetically and almost creatively made for certain roles, we will better understand how to die to ourselves when it comes to fighting for his attention or me not giving her the attention that she needs. But I tell people, marriage is three-corded. Husband and wife is a resource by which God's source flows through. If God's not in the midst, I'm training for marriage like it's a marathon. I'm practicing as if I have to run 26 miles, not one mile. Most people are training for marriage based upon the 20 yard spin. We got a bunch of Usain Bolts and when it comes to marriage. Or we got quick times. Get, get to marriage, we get to the altar line quicker than Hussein can get to the thing. We're quick, but we don't have enough endurance to keep us down the 26th, 27th mile. That's why I tell people, do not boast in something that you're not willing to train for. And when you understand that God considers marriage as one of the most serious things, he has said it's so serious that I liken it to me in the church, we got to take that thing seriously. I'm not getting married one day sooner than God leading me to. I'm not getting married, well, I don't care who begs, I don't care what happens, this man ain't getting married. Until, I'm not saying perfect, I'm talking about, listen, people, there you go, people will say, when it comes to marriage, people get mad at me when I say that kind of stuff. They're like, well, Josh, well, the first three years were hard. The first two years are hard. I said, hard because of what? Listen, I don't want a marriage that I got to fight between us and fight the things against us. When we, are, when we are one, we can fight against it. I said the bulk of the reason why marriages suck for three years, they're too busy fighting each other. That when they're fighting each other, they can't even fight the warfare against them. What do you, why do you think marriage is so attacked? Marriage is attacked because it is an image bearing Christ in the church. God, these demons do not, and the devil, do not want that image prominent. Why do you think you're hearing about 
uh, black China breaking up with this person and you're hearing about divorces here and, and all these, they, they put these people together to make them divorce on purpose so they can disrupt the image of marriage for the people. People try marriage, they don't wanna do marriage. So what happens is we just sign up for it with, with exits in mind. That's why I'm like, don't say those vows if you ain't trying to do, do death, do, uh, uh, do death, do us part. People got to say, God, since I honor you as holy, since I respect you, I'm going to respect the sanctity of marriage. Marriage will fail. Every marriage will fail that God is not in, even if it looks successful. Every marriage will fail if God is not in it. That's why marriage is not being done properly because people are trying to do it without God. Every marriage will fail where there's no God in it, even if it looks successful. Yes? I got an answer for you. Let me tell you. It's easy. It's easy to defend sin because sin is enjoyable. But when you put marriage on it, you can't handle that commitment. It's easy to sleep with someone without commitment. But when you put commitment in it, when you put those standards of marriage in it, that's why people can't do it. Because they're like, I'd rather sleep with you and stay with you and share. And it, it looks good. I, the world can make it sound good like nobody else. They can say, I save money. They're roommates. But when you say marriage, and all of a sudden now, it's crazy how people, they'll shack up for years. That when they get married, they're done in a year. Why? They're trying a mature thing, but too immature to handle the pressures of being committed. Because when you step on that altar, and you stand before God, and you say, till death do us part, and you got everybody watching, that's when the magnifying glass gets on top and all of a sudden now you're like, I can't handle the pressures of it because now what you mean I got to look? Because marriage has such, such, such anticipation to it. She thinks if we get married, he probably, he probably either, either she talked him out of it, he talked out they just both don't care. But people, when they get married, they forget that, man, you mean what you mean I got to be home at 10 o'clock? What you mean you want more time for me? Because when a woman says marriage, she she extra, she, she's thinking of extra commitment now. They're thinking like, oh, that was cool when we were shacking up, but when you put a ring on my finger, that means you really want to be committed. Rings and words like I do don't change the sin nature of a person. That's why they don't want to cross that line because there's something about crossing that line that makes me nervous. No matter how holy people think I am, no matter how ready they think I am, I'd be like, that line right there, I'm not crossing it until God is with me and God says go. But those people don't want to cross that line that's pressures with that. So she can defend it, but I tell people all the time, they always, I see your hands, church, but people always say, they always say we're good. I got people right now, and they go to the single dude, uh, not married dude, but watch my mouth. What I'm trying to say is, is that people will come to me and they online, they social media like they're happy. Mm-hmm. Hugging on each other, eating meals, loving each other. <laughs> dudes, dudes calling me talking about I'm miserable. People always say their relationship is good, but if you was a fly on the wall in those houses, they sleeping in different rooms, cussing each other out. I know Christian couples that use MFs in their arguments. I said, look, man, y'all chose. <laughs> you chose it. Yes. Marriage, the, main, the real meaning is to honor God with it. That, I done said all that stuff and I could have ended it two, 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 10 paragraphs ago. But when you honor God, your marriage will be honorable. 
If you don't honor God, all oh, hell will break loose. Because the scripture says, don't lie, let the sun go down on your wrath. There are certain principles that are not marriage scriptures, but save marriage scriptures. And when you know how to practice those things, when you're in a relationship right now, forgive quickly. Be like, look, man, let, let's not argue to the high heavens. Let's not wait till the next day because the longer you keep that in your heart, now all of a sudden you thought that she forgave you until you didn't wash that one dish and she done blow your head off because she's like, I'm mad about this. You're like, why are you mad about that? It's not because of the dish. It's because held on bitterness, held on unforgiveness. And if we don't know how to handle our own Christian life well, how can we handle a marriage life well? So that's why I tell people, listen, man, I take marriage very seriously. I train on that thing. I, pray, I go through counseling. I talk to my pastor all the time because I ask a bunch of questions. I ask a bunch of questions. And some people get married for stupid reasons because they think, I'm like, bro, you don't got no job. Why are you marrying that woman you don't have no job? Why are you marrying that man and you still gossip and you still tear him down with you? Like, why? Why? But I love him. You cannot love sin out of people. You cannot, you can try to, you can try to fix them as long as they want to be fixed, but you can't fix them. So people say, well, maybe if we just get together, we can fix each other. Nah, man. Only Jesus saved. He's the only lifeguard that can jump in that river and save somebody. You jump in there, you know how when you try to save someone from John, y'all both die? I'm like, Jesus, you save her and let me know if she really want to be saved. And that's how I live my life. And this is just a thing to add, I feel like, about with the singleness. I honestly believe that we have to be totally content with just God before we actually, before he actually yeah. gives us something. Because we actually involve him in the process. We pray and we ask God, like, Lord, bring me this. You're giving him access to that specific part. So now you're going by his guidelines. So if you want to go by his God, I mean, if you want to be a part of it, you got to go by his guidelines. Okay. That, okay. Okay. That was okay. Good. I don't know for babes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> let's get in our person, let's get y'all home.